I'm Peter Ray. Me and my friends are from St. Mary's University in San Antonio, and we'd like to talk about Ben Bernanke and his recent uh, hearing in Congress on January 17th. My name is Joe Ogile, and Ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve Chairman, spoke on Thursday, January 17th, 2008. He was requested for this emergency hearing by representatives of Congress. He was grilled about the steps needed to resuscitate a, suff a suffocating economy. Key issues included the subprime market, inflation, and unemployment. He noted high energy prices, falling stock prices, and declining home values as factors on the economy. And Gabriel, how about telling us about the Federal Reserve? Hi, I'm Gordon Nuera. Now, I'm going to explain how the Fed works. The Federal Reserve is a central bank of the United States. As such, it conducts the monetary policy of the country. The main responsibility of the Fed is to control the amount of money flowing. That is because the more money that flows around, the more inflation we have. And the less money there is, the more unemployment we have. So the Fed has to create a balance between the two of them to avoid both unemployment and inflation. Now, how does the Fed control the amount of flowing flow? There are three things the Fed can do to control the, the amount of money in circulation. It can change the required reserve ratio, which is the percentage of the money deposited by the people that the banks are supposed to keep. If they raise the required reserve ratio, then there's less money in circulation. If they lower it, then there is more money in circulation. It can also adjust the discount rate, which directly influences the, the interest rate at which banks loan money out to the people. If they raise it, then there's less money in circulation, and if they lower it, then there is more money in circulation. The final thing that the Fed can do to control the amount of money in circulation is perform op open market operations, which is basically to buy and sell bonds, government bonds. When the Fed buys government bonds, then it puts more money in circulation. And when the Fed sells them, then they remove money from the As of now, an economic policy has been put in place, and the Fed has lowered interest rates by three quarters of a point. This has had numerous effects on the market. Well, first off, stocks have plummeted over the last week after Bernanke's hearing with Congress. Investors are very weary of this very volatile market, and they really don't know what to do. So people have been pulling out of stocks, and the S&P and the Dow and NASDAQ have dropped considerably since their highs back in October of 2007. Also, the rate cut will devalue the dollar even more against other currencies across the world. Worldwide markets are heavily influenced by the U.S. market, and as of uh, yesterday, Monday, um, with the MLK Day, uh, Japanese markets dropped considerably. They have uh, rebounded today, though. Also, the good news is that um, because of this recession, oil prices, oil prices are starting to drop a little bit. But this is because of fears of a U.S. recession and that um, people won't be using as much gas because they don't have as much money. Thank you. including structured credit products and various special purpose vehicles. As investors lost confidence in their ability to value complex financial products, they became increasingly unwilling to hold such instruments. As a result, flows of credit through these vehicles have contracted significantly. As these problems multiply, money center banks and other large financial institutions, which in many cases had served as sponsors of these financial products, came under increasing pressure to take the assets of the off-balance sheet vehicles onto their own balance sheets. Bank balance sheets were swelled further by holdings of non-conforming mortgages, leveraged loans, and other credits that the banks had extended or for which well-functioning secondary markets no longer existed. Even as their balance sheets expanded, banks began to report large losses, reflecting marked declines in the market prices of mortgages and other assets. Thus, banks, too, became subject to valuation uncertainty, as could be seen in the sharp movements in their share prices and in other market indicators, such as quotes on credit default swaps. The combination of larger balance sheets and unexpected losses prompted banks to become protective of their liquidity and balance sheet capacity, and thus to become less willing to provide funding to other market participants, including other banks. Banks have also evidently become more restrictive in their lending to firms and households. More expensive and less available. Bernanke concentrates heavily on the slumping housing market, a key indicator in the U.S. economy. As of now, the United States has over a month's worth of extra houses. The previous overspeculation caused the housing bubble to burst earlier in 2007. The housing market is so important because of the amount of labor used 
to build and furnish a residence. A few include plumbing, carpentry, and masonry. You know, has deteriorated significantly over the past two years or so. The virtual shutdown of the subprime mortgage market and a widening of spreads on jumbo mortgage loans have further reduced the demand for housing, while foreclosures are adding to the already elevated inventory of unsold homes. New home sales and housing starts have both fallen by about half from their respective peaks. The number of homes in inventory has begun to edge down, but at the current sales pace, the month's supply of new homes has continued to climb, and home prices are falling in many parts of the country. The slowing in residential construction, which subtracted about one percentage point of growth from the growth rate of real gross domestic product in the third quarter of 2007, likely curtailed growth even more in the fourth quarter, and it may continue to be a drag on growth for a good part of this year as well. Recently, incoming information has suggested that the baseline outlook for real activity in 2008 has worsened, and that the downside risks to growth have become more pronounced. In particular, a number of factors, including continuing increases in energy prices, lower equity prices, and softening home values, seem likely to weigh on consumer spending as we move into 2008. Consumer spending also depends importantly on the state of the labor market, as wages and salaries are the primary source of income for most households. Labor market conditions in December were disappointing. The unemployment rate increased by three-tenths of a percentage point, to 5.0% from 4.7% in November, and private payroll employment declined. Employment in residential construction posted another substantial reduction, and employment in manufacturing and retail trade has also decreased significantly. Employment in services continued to grow, but at a slower pace in December than in earlier months. It would be a mistake to read too much into one month's data. However, developments in the labor market will bear close attention. In the business sector, investment in equipment and software appears to have been sluggish in the fourth quarter, while non-residential construction grew briskly. In light of the softening in economic activity and the adverse developments in credit markets, growth in both types of investment spending seem likely to slow in coming months. This was an excerpt from the special congressional hearing on the economic turmoil facing the nation today. As a group, we believe the U.S. is slipping into a recession, and only time will tell how deep that recession goes. The new stimulus plan is either a step forward or backwards. We really don't know. Markets can be very volatile, and I think sometimes, or we think, they need to be left alone. Thank you. This video was produced by students in Dr. Velez's macroeconomics class at St. Mary's University. Thank you.